This is the interview show. The Uniweb's interview show. Go! You didn't act goofy. <laughs> Stephanie <laughs> Collins. I was so into your, your performance. Author of With Angel's Wings totally left me hanging. <laughs> Sorry. Stephanie. You're so entertaining. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on Uniweb's interview show. Thank you for having me. Oh, I also wanted to say your daughter, Ellie, is also a best selling author. Yes, she she's is. She's wrote written two books, an award winning author. Yes. And she's working on her third now. Correct. So yeah. this family is gifted. <laughs> We're special, that's for sure. That's <laughs> a lot of Every ways. family is special. We're all special. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. so excited to talk to you, Stephanie. You've got an incredible story. Um, I read a little bit about it. I did some research on it. Uh, mother of four, right? right. Um, would you care to tell me a little bit about With Angel's Wings? I've, I've read some of the synopsis and that kind of thing, but uh, we just met, we just like connected like mm -hmm. three days ago or something, so I haven't had a chance right. to read it yet. Um, mm -hmm. Would you please share with uh, everybody else what it's about? Sure. Awesome. So um, in 1995, uh, I was going through some really um, tough times. I was a mom to a three-year-old, and my husband was a Marine, and he was, state he was off the coast of um, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. and my second daughter was born, and... Um, we thought everything was fine at first, but uh, she um, got rushed to the hospital when she was about two weeks old, and we found out that she had seven heart defects. So then the question is, why does my kid have seven heart defects? Yeah. And so, um, so I started writing just to try to keep myself sane, and okay. uh, and I continued to do that, and um, and over the years we had a number of nurses and. But um, they kept saying, you've got to share your story, Steph. You've got to share it because there's other families out there that could really benefit from this, people who are going through similar circumstances. And I was petrified. So it took a good long time and a lot of yeah. <laughs> before I finally agreed to uh I all my dirty laundry, right? My exactly, <laughs> yeah. And there's some yeah. really filthy, disgusting laundry in there, too. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stuff. The best one. Uh, so, but I was uh, pleasantly surprised, shocked, even um, that it, it got um, it got a great response from people. You know, I, I I was really happy that I that I finally gave in and and uh, and put it out there for people. Wow. Uh, so, uh, so yes. Yeah, so the story itself is uh, uh, I was a young mom, and uh, my oldest daughter wasn't diagnosed until later in the book, but um, she has high functioning autism with mild to moderate developmental delay, um, which created a number of issues, especially before she was diagnosed, because you know, you're constantly asking, why is my kid doing all these weird things and so forth? And dealing with yeah. people who are saying, you're just an overprotective mother because you have a special needs child. So you're right. trying to make this another special needs child and who would ever want to do that? But anyway. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want more, believe me. Yeah, please. And uh, so, uh, and then, yeah, Sarah, my second child, who in the book, I changed all the names in the book, but the story is 100% true. And uh, Sarah, who is Hannah in the book. Uh, so she has, uh, we finally got it diagnosed. She has a uh, um, rare chromosomal disorder called Wolf-Hirschhorn syndrome. Dr. Wolf and Dr. Hirschhorn put a name to it in the 60s, but mm -hmm. it's a deletion on the on one of the fourth chromosomes. Okay. So um, so there's just a number of um, symptoms, kind of like with Down syndrome, how, you know, there's a spectrum. Motor functions and that. What's that? And motor functions issues and right, yeah. so, issues. Right. And so okay. some of these kids are pretty high functioning. Some are uh, not so high functioning. And of course, when they're an infant, you really don't know what you have because yeah. you know, it's an infant. Uh, so Sarah ended up being not so high functioning. She pretty much. Um, but it's been an interesting ride. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> and you wrote all about it. It's it's incredible because I was just uh, talking about this that this morning. 
um, that this idea that we have this best-selling story inside of us, right? Like our, our DNA is literally encoded with a story that we have to tell the world. Mm-hmm. Now, whether we're, whether we're going to tell it or not is up to us. But mm-hmm. like you said, the, the reason it's in there is because it's meant for somebody else too, right? To inspire somebody else, to help mm-hmm. somebody else move on to the next level, um, to feel connected. Because I'm sure, like for you, you felt... You, I mean, I can only imagine you must have felt so alone, you know, and just well, like, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? Well, that's when I could feel. Um, there are mm-hmm. a lot of times in the book where I'm sure the reader goes, oh, my God, what an idiot she is. How, how much of a moron could you be to like not, you know, not get this? But <laughs> so much, denial plays a big part in a lot of things. You know, when I was first given her diagnosis, um, the the geneticist just basically said, now this is going to be a tough road to hoe. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I got this. I mean, you know, <laughs> sister has ear infections and she has asthma, so I, I can do tough. Same yeah, thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah same <laughs> thing. Uh, and uh, it, it wasn't quite so much the same thing. But then also, there wasn't there isn't even time to react a lot of times. Now, that day that I was given that diagnosis of Wolf-Hirshhorn syndrome, she was scheduled that day to be taken from the hospital that we were in, Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, down to Boston Children's for her first heart surgery. She was scheduled that day to go down. I was wow. given the diagnosis. I was told that there were about 200 cases in the world with it. Wow. And so there was about this much written information and all of the written information was worst case scenario stuff because it was written in the 60s where <laughs> all these kids were just like institutionalized. So there was no optimizing anything for them. And yeah. I was told, OK, so now that she has this diagnosis, you understand that you don't have to go through with the surgery, right? You can let nature take its course. So um, what would you like to do? What would you like to do? Make a decision like, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> what? Yeah. And just to give a little insight on the other part of the story, uh, by then my husband was in uh, back in the States. It took him a week to get back to the States. He was there. So I called him up. He was taking care of my oldest daughter. And I, it, because, you know, if ever there's a decision that both parents need to make, it's, you know, this yeah. life or death decision. decision. So I said, um, here's the situation. What What do you think we should do? And he said, do whatever you want to do. You're the one emotionally involved. So that was that. Wow. And that marriage didn't last much longer. <laughs> yeah. Because that was that. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. That's a, that's pretty harsh. Was... <laughs> he's, ah. yeah, he's pretty universally disliked by, by readers. Um, and I again, can... I was being completely honest through the whole thing. <laughs> but Yeah. Is he, he involved he's... now in the... Oh, no. Um, So he and I officially split up um, when Sarah was about uh, three months old. And um, I think that was the last time he saw her. Certainly the last time he ever asked about her or anything like that. Yeah, he he just um, he's had nothing to do with her since he had about this much to do with Catherine, uh, her older sister. while she was growing up, um, none of it was really positive in Catherine's mind. So once she turned 18, she stopped contacting him because she didn't have to contact him anymore. So yeah. uh, so he's out of the picture. But the wow. other part of the story is that uh, the whole thing brought, yeah, <laughs> brought my husband, Matt, and I, his name is Daniel in the book. <laughs> his name Matt? Friend. Sick of that. Yeah, y'all are just like greatness everywhere. Matt's are the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what? You know the name Matthew. You know, you know what it means, right? No. What? <laughs> it, means gift. it means gift from God. Oh. <laughs> well, there we go. With <laughs> angels' wings, even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So he came into your life. He came into my life. And people, um, uh, you know, when people say, wow, Stephanie, I don't know how you do it and how you got through those things and, and everything. You know, I'm just a mom and a mom has to do what a mom has to do. But this is a guy who had his whole life in front of him, saw what I had on my plate and said, yep, I want some of that and took it on even though he had no reason to you know the, the imagery i just had when you <laughs> when you use that descriptor 
Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> y'all have some ass. Yeah. Like, is that a buffet? <laughs> is yeah. that a buffet? Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's so cool. He sounds like an amazing guy. He is. Yeah. Yeah. So we were uh, we were in New Hampshire uh, when this story took place, and at the very end of the the, the book ends with us moving to Washington State. Uh, Matt wants to make video games, and there's not a whole lot of video games being made in New Hampshire. So um, he's right. now an uh, art director for the game Forza Motorsport. Um, for, yeah, uh, Forza. Yeah, yeah. Heck so, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so both of you all are living your dreams. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I am now, whether I like it or not. <laughs> yeah. The um, life is going good then. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think that that is the best um, moral of my story, is that you can be handed what you think is a total crap, crap life, you know, um, because there are a lot of cruddy things that we've had to deal with. And, um, but you can have... I mean, we have a completely blessed life. I mean, we, we are just like so lucky in so many different ways that it's just been an amazing ride. So, yeah. Holy crap, I have goosebumps like on my face. <laughs> <laughs> that seriously, I mean, it's 100% true that whatever hand you're dealt, it, it doesn't have to define your life. Right. And, it's up to you. But, and we can't, I, I mean, I know for me, I got stuck in the why is my life this way for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, it was my problem. You know, it was it was my perception of reality was off. Yeah. And it sounds like you have a pretty uh, pretty awesome perception of your reality, which is which is the real reality. You know, that yeah. your life is blessed. I mean, you've got four loving children, and you've obviously done really well for yourself, regardless of whatever has whatever's happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to keep moving on. Yep. So a lot of people might not know your story um, about how I know you. So you wrote the book. It was more like a diary or journal at the time. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of went into a phase of trying to get it published. Yeah. So um, so I was a, a nurse at Children's Hospital in Seattle for about 10 years. And um, uh, the needs of the kids were just getting to be too much. Um, my youngest daughter was born, so I had four kids. And it was just like a whole lot of diapers and a whole lot of craziness. <laughs> so, uh, so I quit my job. And then I had a little more time on my hands. So I thought, all right, well, I'll give this a go. So I reached out on uh, a website called pubmatch.com looking for a publisher. And uh, one uh, responded to me, and I was lucky enough that it wasn't some type of a scam because I found out <laughs> there's a lot of those out there, and that's yeah. kind of scary. Yeah, there's so, a lot more now, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Donna uh, Erickson was my publisher and editor, and uh, lucky enough for me, she's also a fantastic editor. Uh, so she might actually made my book you know, pretty <laughs> and, uh, and legible and, you know, grammatically. Most people are so necessary. But yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I got done on the case and uh, we got the book out and everything. Unfortunately, about a year after my uh, book published, uh, Donna developed a brain tumor mm -hmm. and had to sell her business. And the woman that she sold it to, um, I'm not a fan of. <laughs> Uh, she okay. did not run the business very well. Um, uh, she wasn't very ethical, in my opinion. So um, I threatened her with a lawsuit, and uh, she let me out of the contract, thank goodness, because um, I found out the hard way that um, authors can just be left high and dry with no rights to their book and no rights to their cover and no rights. I mean, like, there's just there's just so many ways that they can get screwed over, you know? And, it's uh, terrifying. There's so much language that, like, we don't, I mean, we, we, we deal with language all the time in writing, but like there's so much legal language that is just like, right. what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. And when you're new, <laughs> you'll totally right, leave you messed going up. into it, you, you have no idea what you're getting into. Yeah. yeah. So luckily I was able to get out of that. And then I just uh, published independently from there because I knew a little bit more about the business by then. So that I felt confident just going on to Amazon and, and doing it myself. So you went through KDP? Mm hmm. Yes. So the book was a, is a huge success. Yeah. Like, 
yeah. massively successful. Yeah, um, I was I was shocked. Um, I've I, like I said, yeah, very pleasantly surprised. But kind of like what we were saying before about the books, you know, the stories that we have within ourselves that we're sharing for other people. Um, the best feedback I got. Um, there's an, a couple of stories like this, but the one that that sticks out in my memory is uh, in 2012, I think it was. Um, oh no, no, because this came out in 13. So um, I guess it was about a year after it came out. So maybe in 2014, uh, Sarah um, had an hour-long seizure and um, had to go to the hospital. So I was in the hospital with her, and uh, and I got a um, a message on Facebook from a woman who said, um, she said, I stumbled upon your book and my uh, toddler son happens to have the same diagnosis that your daughter does. And she said, before reading it, I thought that there's no way that anyone could possibly imagine what I was going through or could possibly understand how I was feeling. And um, she said, after reading it, I went out and got six more copies to hand out to my family so that maybe if they learn a little bit about what you went through, they'll understand a little bit more about what I'm going through. And I was just like, yeah, I was like, wow. Oh, that, that oh was, my gosh. That's what cool it's, oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. That, that's what it's about. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can understand why that'd be your biggest, like, feeling of accomplishment. I mean, I, that gave me the... yeah. Once again, all of them. <laughs> it's so incredible. Yeah. Being able to, yeah, being able to share with other people. I, I talk about this all the time, but we're, we're, we were made for community. You know, we were made to be together as, as a group. That's why this it's called the Uniweb um, interview show because it's where all people can come together to be one people. You know, right. the word universe yeah. is it means one note. We are all all part of the same musical note being played yeah. across right. the across the universe you know and it's right. and when we're able to connect with that how powerful it is right like to yeah. give somebody else hope when they feel hopeless right what a right. blessing yeah so all right i'm i don't want to cry but oh, okay. <laughs> don't cry i'm starting to make i'm starting to tear up a little bit oh. but um cuz it's amazing it really is um I, I'm writing a book now. It's called um, The Incredible Red Smiley. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, the, the reason I'm writing the book is because I wanted to know what it would be like to write a book and have this massive success, right? Because I started writing not too long ago, um, but I did it after years of uh, substance abuse and like finally getting back my life back on track. Again. Um, and so I wrote these books and I had no idea what success looked like. So to answer that question, I started writing this book because I wanted to see what would happen when my character, which is like me basically, yeah. handled the success of like blowing up because he wrote this amazing book. Mm. How did you handle the success that, you, that came along with the book? Hmm. Um, did you go, did you go crazy? <laughs> No, not really my style. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think it's really important for indie authors to to determine what their definition of success is, because I think that sometimes authors, um, uh, you know, they they publish their book and they think, okay, Stephen King, that's going to be me. Like, yeah. you know, and so that's he got hit by a he got hit by a van. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying. So, um and so uh so they think about it, you know, success just being um uh sales, you know. Right. And uh, and and that's certainly you know one huge uh way to to judge your success. Um I would say that uh the sales of my book have been um, successful to me, but uh, understanding that um, my goal was to sell at least an average of one book per day. <laughs> so Stephen King, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you know, it was, <laughs> but it was uh, it was a, 
a uh, a goal that I set in 2013, and um, and it and it still continues. You know, so it's a slow, wow. steady, you know, um, continued success. Um, and um, but my goal for the book itself was just to get the word out there. To you know, just you know, once I committed to sharing my story, I was just like, all right, you know, I I have to. I have to share this story and, and get it out there for people to see, and um, and so one of the challenges I think for indie authors is um, to convince people, yes, this is actually worth reading, you know, because a lot of times that's you know like oh gosh, is, is this going to be any good? And so uh, so I so I I entered a contest or two to see okay. if the book would hold up okay. Yeah, it did. It, it <laughs> I'm just fine. <laughs> so then I kind of got hooked on going into the contest, <laughs> uh -oh. and so uh, so I went into quite a few, and it did quite well in all of them. So um, I feel confident that it's a good book, thanks <laughs> to Donna Erickson and to someone else who actually is in charge of actually, you know, the actual story. I mean, that's certainly nothing that I could ever make up in a million years. So um, I'm just the middleman. But anyway, yeah, it's it's been successful. And how I've dealt with that is. It's successful online. Um, this is actually an interesting and stop me if I get too far off on a tangent, but this is a fascinating thing I learned. So um, I have a sizable Twitter following and so that really helps to get the word out about my book and stuff. And so when my daughter wrote her first book, I thought, great, I'll just promote it along with my book and we'll be golden. And what was interesting is that my book continued on just like it had been doing quite well. Um, Ellie's book, nothing, like just crickets. So I thought, huh, but then, uh, and I'm uh, more of an introvert and Ellie is definitely not. So I thought, well, I don't wanna hold her back. So um, I signed us up to go to a couple author events. So there was one up in Vancouver, Canada, another one in Seattle, and a couple local ones and stuff like that. And last summer we went to a number of these events. And what was interesting was that her book never sold less than a hundred dollars worth of books my book didn't sell a single copy all summer long so i thought interesting that the marketing techniques for a memoir versus a middle grade uh fantasy Fiction. is um you know it, it's it's really it's really pronounced and so uh, so yeah it's, it's just interesting uh that that my book does so much better online than than her yeah. book and so um well, I guess there's, yeah, there's those different avenues that you have to make sure you uh, kind of look into along the way. Yeah, certainly don't give up if you're, you know, if you're trying one thing and it's not working, not working. I mean, I can't even imagine what I would do if the first plan I had for marketing my book was to get out there and sell it in person and people go eat. Yeah, no. I know, like door-to-door -door <laughs> vacuum salesman. Hello. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How much does well, a polar bear weigh? It's particularly... Um, uh daunting to say hey you know what you need to do? you need to read my book I and know. it's a book all about me and so oh you really need to read all about me <laughs> i have a better chance of asking my friends for two dollars than i do of them actually just buying a two dollar book for me i'm like oh, yeah. it's yeah. literally <laughs> like why <laughs> They're like, I'm not right. gonna read it. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, okay, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's I mean that's the reason I'm doing this too is because I there's so many people out there with these voices and these stories that just you know they need to be heard because everyone yeah. has an amazing I believe everyone has an amazing story inside of them mm -hmm. you know and it's just like wh wh how is every platform you can have available to you to get that message out to show your personality and why why your work is good um, is important to me I, yeah. One of my goals as a, as a writer is to give away a million copies of one of my books. And because that's like a measure of, well, then I'm obviously doing so I'm doing pretty well if I can give away a million copies. But it's also like, because I want my writing to inspire, like you, you know, I want it to be able to touch people. And, and if I can do that through my writing and, and by giving it away, then that's huge. And, and by doing this, like connecting with other authors, getting to hear their stories has been such a profound experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, just in the short amount of time that I've been doing it.
Yeah. I was like, honestly super surprised that you even wanted to, <laughs> wanted to come. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Surely she hasn't watched any of my <laughs> any of my videos. Oh yeah. Let me no. send her a couple. <laughs> To be honest, I had second thoughts until I watched some of the videos. And I was like, oh, yeah, this will be fun. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. Much. Good stuff. So, um, and all right, I want, I want to kind of get back to uh, the book and stuff like that. But yeah. um, obviously, I know what your inspirations are. Your legacy seems kind of obvious. You want to be able to connect with other people um, that are going through this tough time. Um I do have a, I do want to know just out of curiosity. Yeah. Do you know do you know how many awards that your book has won or been nominated for? Hmm. I don't. You don't have like a wall on Twitter and what's that? You don't have oh, like a wall of I would have a wall. No. I'd have a <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh <laughs> No, I I post um I post pictures of quite a few of them around like uh, on on Twitter uh, usually I have pinned to the top of my Twitter account a picture of the book with um, most of the awards around it there it, it was gonna look really cluttered and awkward if I put them all in so I just put most of them around it and so I, but I haven't really stopped just to put like a couple hundred up I don't know. <laughs> nothing nothing serious yeah. <laughs> well, some people have their Starbucks some people have their you know drugs, alcohol, whatever, cookies, you know, but uh -huh. my, my addiction has been <laughs> entering those contests. Entering. Uh, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's fun. But now I don't have to enter my book anymore. Now I can just enter uh, Ellie's books. So, <clears throat> which, oh, yeah, and I'm looking out from that too, because, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the first ones that she got, she got honorable mention at the Paris Book Festival. So uh, I got a trip to Paris last what? week. So wasn't that fun? <laughs> so yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I want to enter a contest. So and that's what I was gonna ask you. <laughs> I need to start entering contests in like Dubai. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that, I was gonna ask you: Are you working on another book at the moment, or any other books, or are you just helping uh, your daughter oh. Ellie publish? Yeah. Mainly helping Ellie. Sorry if you see a little something. Oh no, it's uh, my my daughter's puppy just decided to join me. Aww, how cute. <laughs> just jumped up. Um, I wrote a, um, the thing is I have zero imagination whatsoever. And so unless it happened to me, <laughs> I, I have trouble writing about anything. But um, I did continue a blog with, it was kind of like a, um, an epilogue of, of my story. Uh, I, can, I had a blog for two or three years where every month, it was a monthly blog, um, and I would just post about what was going on because, um, you know, so Catherine had her diagnosis, high functioning autism with mild to moderate developmental delay. And so she right now, just to kind of give a, a, a status update, she now is 26. Okay. And uh, we have, um, we're her legal guardians. Um, she can't live independently, but she does a lot. She was, um, she competed in the Special Olympics last summer um, oh, wow. in the equestrian events. And so that was, that was fun. And, um, and so she's doing a lot of volunteering at a horse rescue place. So, so she has a purpose in life and is enjoying life. So that's good. That's beautiful. Um, Sarah is now 23. And okay. so she's nonverbal, non-ambulatory, um, exclusively G-tube fed, um, seizure disorder. Cognitively, uh, she's about like a nine month old. So she's my forever baby. And um, that definitely is a downside. I've officially been changing diapers for more than a quarter century now. And I'm tired of changing diapers. <laughs> but it's just one of those things you gotta you have to get to bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, uh, but you know what? The book is about some of the hardest times in her life and in our life uh, because of that. And uh, part of part of what made that so tough was we were like, is this all she's ever going to know? Is this life yeah. of, of hell? And um, uh, it's reassuring to know that for many years now, she she's had many more good years than bad at this point. And so she doesn't have a normal life. Um, or an even necessarily a productive life, but she has a happy life and who can ask for more than that. So that's been good. Um, 
Oh, and she's small too, uh, just uh, so people know what to uh, imagine. Um, Wolf Hirschhorn syndrome, they tend to be small, so she's 50 pounds, full grown. So, and uh, uh, she has size eight infant feet. So even if she could um, walk, I don't know that she really could, because it'd be like a geisha trying to, you know, like balance on these tiny little feet. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's there. But then also, so then I had uh, my son Will, who just turned yeah. 16, and Ellie, of course, who just turned 12, and um, they both have uh, uh, dyslexia and ADHD, and it's been fascinating. Um, just how many challenges I faced as a parent. Because, you know, when, when Will first got his diagnosis of ADHD dyslexia, um, I thought, ah, I got this. I, I, I can do, I can do yeah, uh, special no needs. Problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like uh, when he was about four or five years old, I had the, my phone in my hand ready to call my, my dad saying, someone else needs to raise this child because obviously I am not the right person for this job. Like, this is just, just like, so rambunctious and all over the place. Um, yeah, just challenging in just so many different ways you know behaviorally yeah. and um even like uh i mean just just a, a quick for instance um uh when he was an infant and toddler he ate fine and everything but from like the time he was like four to five he um dwindled down to only being able to eat plain vanilla yogurt or um whole wheat pasta no butter no cheese no Issue, you know, he had just had so many sensory issues. You hear about like kids having problems with like tags and stuff like that. Yeah. He just like has problems with clothes. Like if he could walk around naked at all times, you'd be so happy to just kind of have a <laughs> big around his shoulders. So, um, so, you know, lots of challenges like that. And then, of course, like I said, with the behavior issues and stuff and educationally with the dyslexia too. And so, um, so anyway, my blog focuses a, quite a bit on those challenges too. You know, just uh, it's just a really honest, hey, this is this is what it's really like out there. And so, yeah. um, so that was I'm kind of. Have to check it out because growing up, um, <clears throat> I had uh, I mean ADHD. Und I mean, when I was growing up, they thought I was just mentally challenged. So they put me. You know, they were always testing me, like hoping to see that I was mentally retarded in some way because they were like something's wrong with this kid you know because i was always all over the place i wasn't learning mm -hmm. but it's like the, the the educational system had no idea how to handle and it wasn't just me right it was like a but they, oh, yeah. it was a, a lot of kids but they grouped us all together even right. though we all had separate issues right. um which is which is tough right because then you grow kid, the kid grows up like thinking there's something so weirdly wrong with them like how are they ever going to fit in yeah um, i don't know has the I'd like to say the educational system has been uh, updated and changed a little bit to be more inclusive for kids with those kind of disorders, but I'm not sure. I mean, have you noticed anything? Is that what you talk about in your blog? Good so bit, the system, the educational system is, <clears throat> uh, it is, or at least in our school district, a lot of it depends on where you grow up. You know, I'm sure that our, our schools are quite a bit different, say, than like Mississippi schools or, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, I think the system is is set up better for their success. It's certainly not perfect, but it's better. But uh, what you run into is the people who still have no tolerance for, you know, it's um, who still think this kid just needs more discipline. It's it's those people that they're still there, you know, even yeah. special ed teachers, oddly enough, like I ran into one of those who, you know, sh and she even had a special needs child, which was just crazy. But, um, you know, she just, she was one of those people that was like, no, no, they're just, uh, they're just doing this for attention or, you know, they just need more discipline, that type of thing. And so, so unfortunately, you're, you're, I think you're always going to have people yeah. that you're going to have to work around, not just the, the system. Right. <clears throat> And I mean, and honestly, it's it's difficult. It's difficult to assess, right? Because a lot of us, we just never, we don't have the knowledge necessary. I mean, there's there's a lot more knowledge out there than there used to be on the subject, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, yeah. But a lot of us just aren't privy to it or have any kind of time to actually spend diving. Like I, my mom was raised five of us, right, yeah. by herself. So like when I was, you know, being put in the corner and yelled at and screamed at and tested in school like it was everything she could do just to make it to a, a parent teacher conference between right. her two jobs to try to make sure that her son was going to get kicked out of school you know right. 
how, she's not going to have time to like do research about <laughs> right. yeah. what's actually going on. So, right. I mean, it, it's understandable to a certain extent. It's just, it stinks, you know, it's, and it's, I think it's, it, the internet has become such a wonderful place. Let me prep. <laughs> it is, it can be a wonderful place, <laughs> can right? Be. Yeah. If it's used for the right purpose, which is right. like to connect people who are dealing with issues, similar issues. Um, yeah. Which hopefully, I mean, that's, I mean, obviously your blog is, is reaching a lot of people, like you said, and your book is selling fantastically online. Um, that's what it's supposed to be about, you know, mm -hmm. one person helping another person. Yeah. And uh, it's slow, ch changing the world takes a long time, right? It's about yes. like changing yourself first and hoping the world follows. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's what I like to think. Yeah. <laughs> when I have time, I try to change myself, but. <laughs> that's right, yeah. I shower yeah. every once in a while because I hope other people would shower. <laughs> yeah. Trying to inspire cleanliness. <laughs> well, you need to talk to my son then because he needs a lot more inspiration. <laughs> he just, <laughs> oh, because yeah. of all of his perspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. I am so clever. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, this has been a fantastic interview. Uh, fantastic time talking to you. Yeah, it's been great. I I, um, I really appreciate you coming on. I wanna I'm gonna link uh, all your information, your your book. I'd love to link your daughter's book as well. Absolutely, yeah. Into uh, the video. Um, is Can there? I just say real real quick. Yeah, yeah. If there's ahead. any other parents out there, so the the, the backstory behind Ellie's first book, anyway was that uh, summer before last, so she was 10, almost 11, um, I walked into the living Wait, room one I day. here for this? Yes, yes, okay. sorry, she's awake now. Hi. Hey! <laughs> Hi! How are you? Good, you? Very good. Congratulations on all your success. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so I walked, into, I walked yep. into the living room, and uh -huh. I said, Ellie, get off the Xbox. And she said, well, what do you expect me to do? I said, I don't know, write me a story. Well, what would I write about? And I said, well, you like Greek mythology, write about that. I thought maybe I'd get like three sentences, a paragraph maybe. There was the first book. So if you're looking for a way to reach out to your kids, <laughs> suggest they write a book, so it might just happen. <laughs> That's so, so yeah. cool. I love Greek mythology too. What's it about? Uh, the books? Yeah, the first what? the first one. The first one is about standing up for yourself. Okay. And it stars who? It stars uh, Persephone. 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 That's uh, the wife of Hades, correct? Yes. 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 I love story. <laughs> I love Greek Greek mythology. It's one of my favorite subjects. Mm -hmm. um, and we just because we put in plants versus zombies in there. <laughs> just because that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> accurate. Because yeah. everybody loves zombies. Right? Right. <laughs> Are you a huge zombie fan? No? Okay. Well, Persephone is the, the wife of Hades, so she has to deal with the dead people all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And dead flowers, and that must be really cool. Yeah, because she's also the goddess of spring, so. Goddess of spring, spring that's right. Summer. What, uh, so what, what's the name of the book? Uh, uh, I forget. <laughs> Daisy, uh, Daisy. That's, a good, that's a good title for a book. I <laughs> There it is. Daisy, bold and beautiful. Daisy, bold and beautiful. Is that a, that's available on Amazon and everything too? Yep, Barnes and Noble. So because she actually has a publisher, unlike me, that because I, uh, I planned on publishing uh, myself, <laughs> I planned on just self-publishing it. But I sent it to an author friend of mine, uh, Stephen G's. Uh, he's a fantastic author to um, edit it for us. But I forgot that he is also a publisher. Um, he has uh, Fresh Ink Publishing. And so uh -huh. he asked me three times, uh, please let me publish this for her. So finally I said, okay. And so, uh, so yeah, so she has a publisher. So she's available anywhere. It's a uh, hardcover, paperback, ebook, like, you know, you name it, you can, you can get her books. So yeah, That's so cool. <laughs> she's big time. <laughs> yeah, my kids are, uh, <laughs> they like, they like, they can build Legos. <laughs> So, that's a pretty boys, good skill my, yeah yeah it is pretty good skill they're all awesome and you know what you know what my you know what my daughter's name is what ellie oh, oh really oh yeah. nice is it short for anything or is it just ellie elizabeth oh okay yeah yeah it's a beautiful a lot name. of people call ellie eleanor 
Um, and uh, she was named after my grandmother, Eleanor, but everyone. So, it's a good yeah. Ellie, 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 oxen free. <laughs> awesome. So, um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll link all your stuff in the the description of the video too. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, this has been fantastic. Do you have any like um, favorite quotes or thoughts that you'd like to leave the world with? <sighs> because um, everyone in the world is watching my YouTube yeah. channel. <laughs> oh wait, I, I know one. If every pork chop were perfect, <laughs> we wouldn't have hot dogs. Damn. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. I love that. That is so good. <laughs> okay. I've never, I've never heard that before. <laughs> Me neither. I always hold my breath when she goes to speak because I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Ellie, did you come up with that yourself? No, I got it from a show I really like. <laughs> oh, okay. It's good. It's very good. I really like it. We need we need hot dogs. Uh -huh. this world. Can't go around eating uh, pork chops at baseball games. People will think you're weird. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, what do you got, Mama? <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> you're put on the spot. I know. Give me um, the greatest quote of all. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Just keep smiling, keep laughing, because. There's nothing else you can do. So smile you if you're wild. <laughs> smile if you're wild. I hey, actually made that's that what one I up. love doing. You just made that one up. It's a Not good one. Just now I I like using that one just a lot. <laughs> well, sure. If you watch any of my videos, it's basically all I do is laugh. I feel like I feel like a goofball sometimes because I'm just like <laughs> 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 just like nonstop laughing about stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thing. I get I get really excited about talking to people. I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so cool. Thank you so much for your time. Ellie, thanks for, for uh, dropping in and telling us about your book, too. <laughs> I'm excited to read both of them. <laughs> I actually, I'm going to have my girlfriend read them to me because. <laughs> <laughs> How old is your daughter? My daughter, she's 11. 11? Oh, so that would yeah. be perfect then. No, I yeah. need to get her writing. And then well, I have two even but for reading the books because they're for they're middle grade books, so they're perfect for that age group. So It'd be a good gift for. Her. Yeah, there you go. I definitely plan on I definitely plan on grabbing the books for sure, um, from both of you guys. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> hey, don't be a stranger. Okay? I won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't know who you're talking to. You're now my best friends. <laughs> okay. Tell, wait, when is your book? And so, do you um, have you? So, I've written two books. Yeah, I've written two books. Published, I published two. Um, Dead Heart and Origin Story is about a zombie knight. It's the son of oh. Sir Lancelot. He gets his legs cut off, and he turned turned into a zombie, and he has to go on a quest to prove his worth. Um, it's a middle grade book. I did the artwork for the cover. Oh, nice. It's on Amazon. Oh, okay. It's, it looks like my nine-year-old drew it, but he's probably much better at drawing than I am. Um, <laughs> and then I, I wrote another book called Trent Foster and the Council of Ten, and that's also on Amazon. That's more of a sci-fi adult book. Um, but the one I'm writing right now, I've had to take a little bit of a break from, about 60,000 words into it. And since this interview thing started, I've had to kind of cut back on writing just because this is taking up so much time and I just love doing this. Mm -hmm. um, but I plan on getting back into it in the next couple of weeks once my schedule is kind of evened out a bit. But yeah, they're both right. they're both out there. And um, nice. we'll and see. honestly, I don't know how uh, the one about the one I was telling you about with dealing with success is going to end. That's mm -hmm. kind of one of the um, things I'm hoping to figure out. <laughs> it's like I'm hoping I'm hoping something else tells me. Right. You know, and it just kind of flows out. I, right. I feel like magic is all, or writing is all about magic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just have to allow the magic to work through me. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Yep. Yeah. You can check them out. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plan on it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to uh, have all this stuff up for you on um, Tuesday. So okay. look awesome. out for it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Tell everyone on the internet bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. Nice meeting you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you later. Yo.
Let me ask you a question. You like this video? Huh? Huh? Did you like it? Was it good? Was it good? If you did like it, uh, please subscribe. Thanks.